Hey everyone, Mark here. Today I'm going to be talking about how to do a takeoff at a high altitude airport in Microsoft Flight Simulator, which is a little bit different from a takeoff at sea level. This video is an extension on the Royal Quadrant video that I published a while back. I had alluded to the fact that you need to lean the mixture on prop planes before takeoff, but I didn't really go into the details or demonstrate how to do it, so I'm going to do that now. I'm also going to look over the short field procedures at the same time since a takeoff at altitude often needs to be treated as a short field takeoff just because the takeoff roll distances are so much longer. You'll get the most value from this video if you're familiar with the basics of how to use the throttle quadrant controls which I've covered in a previous video as I mentioned and you'll want to have the working title G1000 mod installed if you're flying a plane with a glass cockpit. Alright with all that said let's fly. I'm sitting in one of the parking areas at Level Colorado's airport, which happens to be the highest airport in the US. The high altitude is going to cause a few problems for the performance of propeller based airplanes like the Cessna 172 and the Beechcraft Bonanza, which I happen to be in right now. The altitude also causes problems for turbocharged prop planes, which also need to be leaned before takeoff. Luckily though, some airplanes in flight sim like the Diamond DA62 automatically adjust mixture for you and you don't need to go through the procedure that I'm about to look at. This procedure also doesn't apply to turboprop planes or jet engines either. What's happening is the temperature, humidity and atmospheric pressure at the airport are combined to make the air a lot thinner and less dense air means that the wings, propeller and engine aren't going to perform like they do at sea level. That translates into a significantly longer ground roll to get airborne and even a small change in temperature or humidity could cause the ground roll distance to be increased by over 50%. I'll do a side by side during takeoff so you can actually see how much of a difference a properly leaned engine is going to make versus one that isn't. Before we look at how to lean it though, let's start by getting the engine running. I've already gone through part of the startup checklist and I'm at the point where I'm ready to start turning over the engine. For normal startups you'd push the mixture in full rich like I've got it right now and turn the engine over and it'll start fine. But seeing as I'm at altitude if I were to do that right now what you're gonna see is gonna happen is the engine's gonna start running and watch the RPMs as they just drop and the engine dies immediately. What I'm going to do to get the engine running and stay running is I'm going to pull the mixture out about a quarter of the way on the dial. I don't need it to be super precise, I just need it to be about a quarter of the way from rich for it to be able to turn over. So that when I actually do start the engine and I have my throttle only open a slight little bit, you can see that the engine's going to stay running now because it's idling at around 900 RPM and if I drop the throttle to zero, it should settle down somewhere around 500 or 600 RPM and stay running. The mixture still needs a bit of refinement though to be able to burn as efficiently as possible and make sure that we're developing enough power so that we can actually get to our takeoff speed and get airborne. I'll do that in just a little bit once I'm closer to turning onto the runway. As a side note, if you started the engine with the auto start shortcut, the mixture will automatically get set to the best value possible without you having to tune it at all. So if you're looking for a way to save time or you can't be bothered trying to figure out what the peak mixture is, you can just use that option and you'll be set. Alright, I'm going to complete the startup checklist now and I'm going to taxi to the runway and I'll see you there in just one second. Before I move on, I want to remind you to hit that like button if you haven't already and please consider subscribing to get more Microsoft Flight Sim content. I publish a new video every two weeks with tips, tricks and tutorials for newcomers to the world of Flight Sim. I'm holding short of the runway now and I probably should mention that you only really need to lean the mixture for airports that are going to be anywhere above about 5,000 feet. In theory, I believe it should be whenever the engine is going to develop anything less than 75% of full power when you have it on full rich. But using 5000 feet is a decent approximation for the sim. I don't really worry with any of that advanced calculation stuff. Usually I'll lean the engine just before taxiing onto the runway or as I turn onto it if I'm at a quiet airport and I have some time to come to a complete stop on the runway and do my run up. In this case, I think I will turn onto the runway since there is no other traffic around and I've got multiplayer off so I don't have to worry about someone else complaining that I'm blocking the runway. Speaking of which, when you do turn onto the runway, one thing to remember is to try and get yourself as close to the start of the runway as possible. 
you want to maximize the amount of runway that's going to be in front of you because runway behind you really isn't going to be of any use in a short field takeoff scenario. So in this case, at this airport, there were actually two taxiways to enter the runway, the one that I just came on and another one just ahead of it. I decided to take the furthest one, even though this runway is really long and I probably wouldn't have any issues starting from that second taxiway if I really wanted to. All right, now that I'm in position on the runway, I'm going to set my parking brake on and I'm going to look at how to tune the mixture for takeoff. The first thing I do is I'm going to make sure that I'm on the lean menu page in the multifunction display. So to get there, all I've got to do is click the engine button and click the lean button. With that done, I can see the exhaust gas temperature for all six cylinders on the airplane. Next, I'm going to apply the brakes just in case the parking brake doesn't hold me in position. On some airplanes, if you go full power, you're going to see that you're actually going to start moving if you're not also pressing on the brakes as well as having the parking brake on. So I'll do that right now. I'll go to full power. I'll let that engine spool up. And now I'm going to be ready to start tuning the mixture. What I'm looking to do is to get the EGT to peak. So I want to find the highest possible value for this EGT number. So to do that, I literally just start pulling the mixture back out and I keep watching the numbers go up and up and up and up. And eventually it's going to start dropping back down again. There we go. Around 1160 was about the peak. Once I figured out what that maximum value is on the EGT gauge, what I'm going to do is I'm going to push it back in just a little bit so that the mixture is slightly richer than it actually needs to be. Once I've made the mixture slightly rich, at that point I can reduce power back down to idle. There is a keyboard binding shortcut that you could use in the controls to achieve the exact same thing that I just did manually. It's called best mixture if you're looking for it in the key bindings menu. But the problem is as of the time I'm recording this, there's actually a bug with it and it doesn't actually work. Every time I go to use it, the engine completely conks out on me. I imagine they'll fix this bug at some point, but the backlog of bugs in Flight Sim is so long at the moment, I can imagine this one would be pretty low on the priority list. So it's something to keep an eye on and keep trying it from time to time, but I wouldn't hold my breath waiting for it to be fixed either. With the mixture set, I'm going to do one last check of my flaps and my trim, and then I'm going to get ready for my takeoff. I could hold the brakes down as I apply full throttle to reduce my takeoff roll distance, but this runway is really long enough that I don't need to worry about every last inch of runway space. Another thing that I've read that you could consider doing is to adjust the mixture literally as you're rolling down the runway. This isn't the recommended way to do it, but it seems like there are some people who actually do this in real life as well. You have to be quick and there's so much going on during takeoff that I find it to be just a little bit too much to coordinate. Feel free to give it a try though. The worst that's going to happen in the sim is that you'll crash into some trees and just have to reset your flight. Now, as you get close to rotation speed, you want to gently start pulling back on the stick and watch for takeoff. You might end up with only a 100 or 200 foot per minute climb rate to start. Keep a much closer eye on your airspeed so it continues to go up towards VX and very importantly, make sure that you don't develop a sink rate. When the plane does eventually get to VX, adjust your pitch to hold that airspeed as you get over any obstacles near the end of the runway. Also, don't forget to raise your landing gear if that's an option on the plane that you're flying as soon as there is no more usable runway in front of you. And then once you're clear of any obstacles, lower the pitch slightly again and let the plane accelerate to VY so that you can get your best rate of climb. This is also when you'd pull back the flaps completely because you don't need that extra lift anymore. By this point, you should be able to establish a more reasonable rate of climb for the airplane that you're flying, but it's still going to be way less than what you would get at sea level, so be aware of that. I'm going to wrap up this video by doing a side by side by side comparison of the same airplane in different situations. On the left hand side, I've got the airplane with an improperly set mixture for this airport's altitude. In the center is the takeoff I was just showing you a couple of seconds ago with a properly tuned mixture. And on the right hand side, I've got a takeoff at sea level at a different airport. When I first had the idea for this video, I actually did a whole bunch of tests to make sure that what I was going to be saying was true in the sim. And as it turns out, it is modeled properly. 
as you can see, it's a long run up in either case at the high altitude airport, whether your mixture is set properly or improperly, especially if you compare it to the sea level takeoff where you get airborne almost within a few seconds of going full throttle. You can also see on the left hand side that the improperly set mixture makes a big difference when taking off from a high altitude where it struggles to get airborne at all. And that's going to do it for my very short video on how to configure mixture at altitude. If you got some value from this video, please make sure to hit that like button. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so. I'll see you in the next video.